Daffler. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Hi, my name is Gail Daffler, and I'm a prevention specialist at Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley. And my name is Adina Wingfield, prevention specialist also with Goodwill Easter Seals. Thanks for tuning in. And we're going to be watching some information about prescription medication safety. As you know, the Miami Valley, we have had lots of things happen around the opioid epidemic. If you start to feel a certain way, uh, start to feel a little emotional while you watch this, please take a second, put us on pause, and, and take care of yourself. Um, at the end, we're going to have some resources that you can contact for that extra support. That's right. This is a judgment-free zone, so just take time to relax and enjoy the presentation. Okay. So today we're going to go over the following areas. Number one is discussion of the scope, causes, consequences, and mis of misusing prescription medications. We want to identify four key messages for safe medication practices. And discuss how you can take action in your home or in your community to educate others about safe medication practices. So medications can help us, but when we think about that, how do they help us best? What do you think? When I think about medications, I think, oh, they're going to cure diseases. They help us feel better. What else do you think they help us do? They help with pain, right? They help us with emotional distress. We take medicine for that sometimes too, right? Right. Exactly. But that they're best used will we follow the directions from our healthcare professionals, making sure we understand how much to take, how often to take it. Can we take it with this other medication that we use? And Gail, I have a question for you. Oh my goodness, okay. Who is the most important person on your healthcare team? Oh my gosh. Dita, is it, is it my doctor? Mm. Is it my pharmacist? Is it, is it Chris out there? It might be Chris. No. no. Uh -uh. Is it me? It's you, yes, you are the most important person on your healthcare team. So we're here to help you to become better advocates for yourself. We're here to encourage good conversations with your doctors and your pharmacists and your nurses, all those people around who help make the team. And of course, ask yourself a lot of good questions so that you can get the, the great answers to help yourself stay safe. Okay. Next, we're gonna go over some scenarios and let us know, is it good use or misuse? The first scenario, somebody has just had a surgery and um, they were prescribed to take two pills every eight hours. Well, after six hours, they still had pain. They're like, oh, it's okay. I'll take it after six hours. I'll take two pills every six hours. Is that good use or misuse, Dina? Misuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they were taking, wait, they were taking too much. Okay. That's right. The second scenario is um, one, of, one of my family members. They asked if they could borrow my medication. And we're used to doing that, so I just said, sure, go right ahead. You can borrow my medication. Is that good use or misuse? Misuse. Even if it's my family? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, okay. So, yeah, so sharing our medications, whether we've done it all along, that is still misuse. And also, um, the last scenario, scenario number three is, um, a patient um, is, is taking an opioid and they decide to have a glass of wine with that. Is that good use or misuse? Definitely misuse. You think about some of the famous people that have passed along, or passed away rather, Whitney Houston, Gerald LeVert, they added something with the medicine they had and they are no longer with us. A lot of our opioids have stickers on them that say do not take with alcohol, so we need to make sure we look at, at our prescription bottles and follow those recommendations. That's right. So misusing medications is recapping, taking more than prescribed, sharing or taking someone else's medication, or taking medication for a different reason than prescribed, okay? And that's regardless of our intentions. Okay. And prescription drug misuse, it's a national epidemic. Um, it's hit all of our states, and currently in our area, it's, it's on the rise now. We, we Unfortunately, we've had um, more, um, more overdoses here in the month of March um, than we've had in quite a while. So we really need to make sure that we understand this and that we ha we can carry on and um, have better habits around this. Um, in 2017, this is when we had the most deaths here in Montgomery County. We had 566 people pass away from unintentional drug overdoses. It's way too many people. Um, we had 5,111 in the state of Ohio and over 70,000 people 
in the country in the United States passed away that year. In 2018, we finally have some stats from 2018. And um, in Montgomery County, um, the drug overdose rate um, declined by 49%. There's 288 people that passed away. Um, 3,764 people passed away in the state of Ohio. And um, over 67,000 people in the United States. This was from our Centers of Disease Control. So they just released these numbers. As you can see, we still have a lot of work to do as a community. And this is from our public health. Um, and they, this is um, a chart of unintentional drug overdoses um, by month and by year. Um, the red line is 2017, blue is 2018, green is 2019, and 2020, which is current, is in purple. I want to talk a little bit about May with you, Gail, when there's a spike here where someone may have questions, and that's at 81. So do you remember what happened in May? Right, right. I do. Um, we lost a lot of people. Um, we had uh, two or three batches of carfentanil um, come through our county that killed multiple people. Um, can you talk a little bit about carfentanil and concerns around that, Dina? Well, the biggest concern is carfentanil is for elephants. It's an elephant tranquilizer, and so people ingesting that is definitely a problem, taking that into their bodies. And so those who were in the mental health issue of addiction went and chased that high. And so we want to make sure that um, people understand that people actually chase that high and they pass away because of the carfentanil. And the reason we're talking to you about this today around medications is that um, out of the 566 people who passed away in 2017, 80% of them had misused medications. They started off by misusing prescription medications. So that's, and then they went on to street level drugs. And so that's why we're here talking to you about this. And that's right, and those, those painkillers are opiates, and those opi the opiate use leads for the craving of street drugs like heroin and fentanyl. So this epidemic affects all of us. It doesn't matter our age, um, it doesn't matter our ethnic background, our educational background, our um, how much money we make, how much money we don't make, um, our careers. It's it affects it affects everybody. Everybody and children as well. Look at that. So several factors fuel the misuse of prescription drugs. So we'll just go over a few things we see here and you'll pretty much understand. As we watch TV, we watch the news, unfortunately there's a lot on there, but here's some things that fuel it. Look at that. Number one, it says media up there, drug taking culture, lots of myths surrounding how we take medicine in our families and many more things. We'll give you a minute to read that. There's one that stands out to me is that easy access. And did you know that most people get access not from the street necessarily, but from a family member? Yeah, right. close right. family member, uh, because what? We're not clearing our cupboards out like we should. So we'll talk about that a little more in the presentation about how to keep our cupboards clear so family doesn't get hurt. Right, the one, the one that, that I see a lot is, is the media. Whenever I watch, like say, a show on TV, there's that there's that commercial there that encourages us to talk to our physicians about taking a certain medication. Mm -hmm. um, and that is something where it's like, take this pill, that'll fix that. And so, you know, that to me, that, that's sending a message to us that if we have an issue, go yeah, take for that. Go, go take that pill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the misuse of prescription drugs has serious consequences. And one thing we'd like to share, we know as working with DEA, that they brought up to us that if you have someone else's prescription medication with you in your car, especially without uh, with another person's name on it, you can go to jail for that. So making sure people understand that. And also share that with your young people who have begun to drive, make sure that they uh, understand the law. There's a there's health risk with this. Um, it, you know, it, it could lead to addiction, it could lead to other things. Um, like say maybe heart problems, other problems with uh, different organs in your body. Um, so there's a lot of health concerns around misuse of medications. Yeah, that's right, and addiction most of all, which can lead to overdose. And so we just wanna make sure that we understand that the misuse of prescription medications has serious consequences. Okay. 
There's great news though. So we're gonna go over steps that you can take in your home to make Montgomery County safer around prescription medications. Number one, only use prescription medications as directed by your healthcare professional. Number two, do not share or take anybody else's medication. Three, keep your medications safe. And four, model safe medication practices. So only use prescription medications as directed by a healthcare professional. So we're just making sure that we're in contact with our doctor and our nurses and making sure that we understand from them what the prescription is about. So we're gonna avoid self-medicating and we're gonna ask a lot of questions. So here is a sample of a prescription medication right here. Um, who does it go to? It goes to Jamie Smith. Jamie's been prescribed what? It's Vicodin. And she's supposed to take one to two capsules by mouth every eight hours as needed for arm pain. If this was your prescription, would you have any questions that you would like to ask? Do you I have would. any? Yeah, what, what questions would you ask, Dina? Maybe when do I take one and when do I take two? That's a great question. How do I feel when I take two or you know, how will I know that one's enough? I want to know what my pain's going to feel like. Mm -hmm. You know, what is that, you know, what's normal pain? Because I heard it, that it's painful to heal sometimes, right, Dina? Right. So I want to know what that normal pain is going to feel like, but then what is that pain going to feel like when I take that one pill, right? right? Mm -hmm. and, and then when do I need to call the doctor when mm -hmm. it's like out of control pain, right? Mm -hmm. So just having more conversations with our physicians, with our pharmacists around pain. We want to expand that so we have, we have a better understanding of what we're going through. And we're all human, so we just want you also to pay good attention to everything, making sure that your name is on there. I have received one time someone else's prescription medication through the window, maybe the tech was um, moving too fast, but make sure it's yours and it's the right name on the medication and the right dosage. Exactly, yeah. Okay, mixing opioids with alcohol can cause dangerously slow breathing. So make sure we look at that warning label on on our prescriptions, making sure we examine that to understand, are we able to, if we have, if we drink alcohol, are we able to have a drink with that? Are we able to drive with that? Right. You know, so um, making sure like, um, sometimes they have different warnings, so making sure we understand all those. That's right. So other tips, when scheduling an appointment, let them know you have questions. I love this part. It says keep your medication list updated. So please take a list with you of all your medications, and, and that includes vitamins, right, Neil? It sure does. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and for your medication list, they have really great um, applications on your cell phone that you can keep your list in your cell phone and share that with your providers then. That's great. Mm -hmm. And please, you know, for your parents, for seniors that you know of, make sure that you help them with that as well. Um, this is a presentation for the family, for the community. So we want to add that part in here now. And we want to make sure we put our over-the-counter medications on that too. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Very important. Yes. So know your pharmacist can answer questions about the medications. Also ask, is there anything else I can use, which we call alternatives, for your medication for pain? And also um, respect the RX. You can go to, um, the, so the last one is respect the RX. That is a list of questions you can ask your providers about your medication. It's a great outline. It's everything from why, why am I taking this medication um, to things like, is this, does this have addiction potential? So you're an informed consumer, informed consumer. We want to make sure you understand some of the decisions that might be, you know, that, that you're making as, as a consumer. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to generationrx.org to get that list. That's right. It's great to ask questions and to feel empowered to do so. We want you to take more time with the doctors. We're not letting anyone rush us out of the uh, procedure room. Okay. So two says do not share or take someone else's medication. Even if, even if it's a family member? That's right. Even if it's a family member, we're not sharing our medication. Mm -hmm. Uh, regardless of the intentions because guess what they may have a different body weight than me um, and it can impact them differently and so we want to make sure we don't hurt another person that's another consequence someone else taking my medicine and they get sick that could be jail time for me mm -hmm. okay store your medication safely 
where's the place that you would go to that number three it says keep your medication safely stored okay think about this could your cupboard in your bathroom be a source of misuse for someone else right most of us are storing it there right right uh, but we're trying to uh, encourage everyone right to pull it pull it out of the restroom you know and put it somewhere else outside out of mind not out of your mind but outside of the mind of the people who come to visit because we never know who may be addicted or seeking drug seeking in our homes exactly if you can lock it up and you can lock it up, like say you can use a medicine safe, you can use your desk drawer, you can use the trunk of your car. Um, it can be a gun safe that you, you lock it up in. But become creative. Make sure that you lock up your medications. Because like, unfortunately with, with addiction, we don't know who is and who might be drug seeking. Right. And you can find another use for that empty space in the cupboard. I share this with everyone. Use it for the soaps, for the candles. You can find a use for that, but just take that medicine mm -hmm. out of there. All right, and so our best option, we see this big green lock. Our best option is locked, right? Lock it up. Lock it up. <laughs> okay, so keep your medications safe. Go through your house. See what medications you no longer use. Even if you say, I don't take medication, because I used to say that too, didn't mm -hmm. I? Mm -hmm. I did this. I have 500 pills I found in my house. Oh. I, don't, I don't really go take medications. I found old prescriptions that I had from years ago. Mm -hmm. I found over-the-counter medications. Because as we know, we can misuse prescription medications, we can misuse over-the-counter medications, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, our, our pet medications can be misused too. So we need to clear out our home out of all those things. So we can, um, there is, you can go to any of the police stations here in Montgomery County, Walgreens, CVS, mm -hmm. Miami Valley Hospital, St. Clair Community College, they all have uh, prescription drop boxes. Oh, yeah. They're open how many how many times a year, Dina? Are they open 365 days a I year? I believe that's correct. During business hours? That's right. So make sure you go there. Clean out your, your medicine cabinets. You don't have to wait for the DEA take back day. You can do that any day of the week. Um, so please do that and do that regularly. Please do. And one other thing I just thought about was the refrigerator. Some of our medications are kept cold, so mm -hmm. some of those old ones in there, go, go for those as well. Okay. Okay. Another option to dispose of medications is to use a medication disposal pouch. This is really easy to use. It has activated charcoal inside. It's hold, it can hold up to 45 pills, six ounces of liquid, or six pain patches. All you have to do is open it up, really simple, like this. You don't even have to touch charcoal inside the Udina. No, no. Sure. And so we have some pills right here. We're gonna put these pills right in here. Just put the medication right here. Here we go, we empty that out. And then how much water do we put in? We're gonna fill it halfway, please just halfway, with water. There you go, and then you seal it up. It's got like a Ziploc seal on top of this. Zip it up, and then we shake it up, don't we? we shake it up. You wanna hear it fizz a little bit? Mm, like that sound? It's fizzing. And then we, you know, just throw it away. You just throw it away, and that's something that um, you can get these pouches at your local pharmacies, local businesses, and if you're interested in getting some for your house um, or for your business, please call us here at Goodwill at 461-4800. It's 937-461-4800. We can get you some of these because we want to make sure that your home is safe. That's right. And the purpose of those, right, we're protecting the environment and we're helping um, tell everyone, don't flush your medicine down the toilet, right? Right. right. And we don't want that in our groundwater. We also want to protect our pets. So this is environmentally friendly. And so just t telling your family and your kids about this, kids today are really environmentally uh, friendly and they'll love that idea of kind of helping get those things out the house. Uh, let's say you are concerned about a loved one and you don't have access to the doTERRA. Um, and you don't have access to get to a drop box and you're you, there you might be having a loved one return home from treatment and you have some opioids in your house you need to dispose of so here's another action that you can do so you can take um, used kitty litter or used coffee grounds 
put them in a bag, put the medication in that then. Um, you can seal it up, shake it up. I would put some water in there too to kind of get it to break down a little bit more. Step number two is throw that away into the trash. And step number three, which I think this is a really, really important, important. okay? You want to make sure that you um, dispose of your medication bottles, but you take off your labels and then have them shredded as well as any of your pharmacy papers that you, uh, medications you no longer use um, so that people can't get into your trash and to find out what you have in your home. That's right. Well, I also want you to model safe medication practices, but we know you do that already. So we're just gonna help you to remember some things that we've shared today. Um, there are alternatives that we need to think about too with medication. And here are some right here. A meditation, some of us just take some quiet time to just ease your mind instead of going for that pill or even that drink, whatever it is, med meditation. And mindfulness, living in the moment and not, not worrying about what happened last week or what's gonna happen in the future but thinking about the here and now and taking that moment and then becoming, you know, be in the moment then. Mm -hmm. Then there's yoga, working with the chiropractor, who we know is the bone doctor that helps keep our spine aligned and also has great information about alternative medicine. So a chiropractor is a great other alternative, but if you do visit with a chiropractor or any other health practitioner, please make sure they're all talking and that they communicate your health needs together so that there's no um, interaction with the medicine, right? Right. Then we're here with our physical therapy team, you know, making sure that we're following those exercises that they're recommending for us or whatever therapy that they have us do and following through on that so we can get stronger. Mm -hmm. Stretching, we all know that's good to do. Stretching and moving that blood in your body, just lots of movement and different things we can do on our own instead of taking medicine. What two, three. What's, What's your, your alternative? alternative? So what do you love to do? What's your fun thing? Especially in this day and age, we're all dealing with COVID-19. So what are some things that you're doing to handle this? Whether are you watching movies at home or having movie parties? I mean, I love to do the Zoom movie parties, Dina. Oh, That's like my fun, fun. thing. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. So go to a concert, maybe not right now, but pretty here soon. You'll be able to go to a concert game nights with your family, and um, just doing what you love. That's what we talk about, and I know you love music. I love art, so I love drawing, and I love to sing, so think about things that make you happy, go for it. And maybe there's something that you wanted to learn how to do, whether it's playing a musical instrument, <laughs> learning a foreign language, whatever that is. You have that time right now, take that time use it to your benefit because maybe there's something that you've wanted to try all along this week, all the years of your life and you're like i want to do that that's a great time to try those mm -hmm. things in this time and most times pen and paper is a gift so write down your goals and things you'd like to work on if it is that vacation mm -hmm. plan it out it's fun to plan it out and dream about it and one day it'll come to pass so these are the things we like to think about our alternatives Take action, educate yourself. You can go to generationrx.org and learn more about prescription medication safety. They have all kinds of presentations and games to do. They have over 40 videos to offer, so you can learn more about medication safety. So they have thing, great things for the kids, you got things for older adults, everybody. So please go there and take the family there as well. So we wanna know how can we help? There's some things we need to learn to do in an emergency. So if you suspect someone has overdosed on an opioid drug, how do you help? Let's look at it. Let's say you have tried to get, the, get them to respond and you have called, you know, maybe you don't know their name, but you're, you're just, hello, hello. And, you, and they're, they're lying there or they're sitting there and they're not responding. And you have, you know, you have taken and like um, shook their shoulder. They're not responding. I would call 911. Mm -hmm. Give them, that. make sure that you, you connect them to the emergency services first. That's right. Then it says two, move the individual to the recovery position. And this is meaning that you are safe and you don't see anything that you could touch that can get you hurt. We want you to remain safe at all times. Move them if you're able and if not, you know, do your best. 
Number three is if you have the Narc if you do have a Narcan kit, administer that then after you've called 911, after you've moved into your recovery position. If you have that available, please use that. Let's talk about the recovery position. Okay. The reason they're on their side is because they have their head, um, their hand is under their head to support it because you know there may be contents in their stomach and we don't want those coming up and choking them while they're asleep. So we wanna make sure that, and the knee helps to stabilize the body and help them to remain safe. So that's a, a major thing, a, ma a big help, but also the last part, right? Right, stay with that person until help stay. arrives. Um, and I know for myself, I know when I'm in the middle of a crisis, I forget all these steps, mm -hmm. you know? And if that's something, if you're like me, just call 911 and then they'll go through those steps with you. So that's something like, I know I, I have that anxiety when I'm in the middle of a crisis. Please, please follow those steps and, and help them out. And they're the, the team that once you call 911, they're there to help you with all those steps as well. That's right. This is just information about our Narcan here in Montgomery County. We do have the, um, the one that was like the nasal injector, which is really easy to use. Mm -hmm. um, and so Narcan um, classes are available through um, Samaritan Behavioral Health. And um, they're every Wednesday from um, noon until 1 p.m. at Samaritan Behavioral Health. Or if you have more than like say 10 people, you can call them and they can come to your location, which is really nice. Every person will be given an Arcane kit right. and you get two, inject, um, two nasal injectors with that. So Project Dawn, deaths avoided with naloxone. Their phone number is 937-734. 9468. Please give them a call and they would they would love to help you get connected to a kit to help save lives here in Montgomery County. When we think about helping others, there are local resources that we use and one is the Get Help Now application. And so most of us have a smartphone and what you do is you go into your Play Store and you, on your smartphone and you locate the Get Help Now application. And that's also with Montgomery County Adamus Board. So you wanna look inside your Play Store and you can download the app that will help you with social services and financial opportunities as well as um, mental health and addiction programs. Exactly. There's really great resources on there too about housing, about food. Yeah. And they also have the um, our medication um, drop boxes here in Montgomery County, their location. So you can go there and it's really handy. Um, the next is crisis care. Our Samaritan Behavioral Health has crisis care here in Montgomery County. And you can call them anytime in case you have an emergency. Maybe somebody has said that either thinking about suicide, you can call them. They will help get you connected to the resources that are needed. Their phone number is 224-4646. And so the third point here is the crisis text line. An individual can text for hope, and that is the number for hope to 741-741. Once they text to that number, they will be able to speak to a live counselor who will um, help them maybe with the wellness check. If you're thinking about, know somebody that's thinking about hurting themselves or anything like that, that's a great time to text someone if you really don't want to talk on the phone. And they can get you some great pointers. The next is the Miami Valley Warm Line. And that is if somebody wants somebody to talk to, or maybe they're looking for support, maybe area resources, you can call at any time, 11 to 7 a.m. Monday through Friday, and um, we're able to, to answer those questions for you. The phone number is 937-528-7777. And then lastly, we have the DEA website, um, wakeupdayton.org. You'll find great opportunities for DEA drug take back days. And those are actually, they sound very serious and it is, but we also have a great time. It's a community day that's planned. So your family can bring in all of your old medication, hand it in to the police um, with no consequences whatsoever. Just get those covers cleaned out and bring those to the DEA take back days. So use that website to find out when those events occur. And it's a great way to, to get your kids into that habit and teach them a new um, 
just to teach them that great habit and to make it fun. Yeah, it establishes great um, relationships with our law enforcement officers that they're also here to help. And they want to help clean up these streets just as much as we do. And so we're all prevention specialists and we just wanted to share this information with you today. Great. So well, we just wanted to say thank you so much um, for your time. And if you do have any questions, if we went over some information, you're like, I need to know more, you're welcome to give us a call. Um, our telephone number is area code 937-461-4800. Thank you so much for joining us today and you enjoy the rest of your day.